So you took the job offer or you offered the job, but then you had to take the job back. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, there's a few reasons that can happen. So if you want to know why that would happen or why you may need to do that, then I will tell you, keep on watching. Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching another Hey HR video. If you want to know why you may have gotten that job offer, accepted it, ready to get started, and then found out that the job got taken away, then you might want to keep watching. On the flip side, hold up, hold up, rewind. On the flip side, if you want to know hey, I already offered this job to somebody, but now these results came back on this background screening. I might have to take the job back. Then listen, you definitely want to keep watching. Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching another Hey HR video. Guys, this one is packed and loaded with some great information about background screeners. And y'all know I tell you all the time, if you're looking for a background screening company, then I got the one for you. So just reach out to me, either comment below, send me an inbox on LinkedIn, or on IG and I will definitely help you get the best prices and the most accurate background screening, most efficient services ever with reference services. I'm gonna tell you guys, I am a consultant for reference services and I absolutely love it. I've used their services for over almost 10 years. For about eight years, I've used their services as a client. And I recently, just last year, became a consultant for them because guess what? It doesn't even need me selling it. I have compared these background screenings with the police department, with the state sled services, and y'all, they always come back with the most accurate thing and give me all the details, give me a glossary to tell me what the terms means, give me somebody I can talk to to help me navigate through this background screening. If there are any glitches, I get constant updates and emails, and at any time, I can provide additional information, and I'm constantly given additional information. They even allow you, check this, a service to check social media for you. So you don't have to worry about looking at all of those EEOC things that could probably cause you to feel dismayed in one way or the other. Guess what? They'll check it all out for you and tell you if it, they have anything on their social media networks that would be detrimental to your company. So I absolutely love them. Anyhow, now that I already throw that out there, let me tell you guys, without a doubt, that background screenings are super duper important. So I know that a lot of times job offers are extended and someone may think, okay, I got the job. They already offered it to me. Y'all pay attention because there's a big word in there that means so much. And it's only one word and it's called contingent. Contingent means you got this job offer as long as you've passed every single thing else I give you. So if that's a physical, if that's a drug screening, if that's a background screening, if that's a credit check, as long as you pass those successfully, you're fine. Now you're wondering, well, Tamika, why do they send that out to me early? Because guess what? We cannot legally run your background screening without offering you a job. Same thing as running your I-9 to see if you're a citizen. We're automatically supposed to make sure that you're the most qualified candidate. We can't make that decision based on if you're a citizen or if you have a clean record. So we're letting you know that based on your qualifications, based on your experience, based on the minimum qualifications of the job description, you meet all those things. Your interview was the bomb. You meet all those people who was out there at the company and they loved you on top of all the other people that they interviewed and guess what, you got the job. So no need to be upset with the company when they turn around and take the job. It's not them, it's you. And if it's not you, then it's inaccuracies on your background screen that you need to get cleared up. So if you're like, well, how do I know if my background screening has inaccuracies? I'm gonna tell you, check out this video. It goes into good detail on how you can check that because there are a couple ways but there's mainly one way to make sure that it's right so check out that video and if you don't want to stop this video right now which obviously I don't want you to I want you to watch the whole video <laughs> but if you don't want to stop this video right now I'm gonna tell you that the best thing to do is wait until the end and you can click on the video at the end and watch that one right after this one but there's so many reasons and the first reason that you can get a job offer taken away from you after you already got it, is if you have habitual behavior. Tamika, what's habitual behavior? I got you. Habitual behavior is whenever you do something more than once. So if you have a DUI, you have more than one DUIs. If you have a CDB, you already hit on somebody, hurt somebody, domestic violence or not. If you have these criminal domestic violence charges, if you have any charge that's more than once, 
A company can say you do not meet their minimum qualifications for integrity or their vision or their purpose, their values, their mission. And so they can say that you're not a good fit for their company, especially if you're going for a driving company and you have a DUI. If you have more than one DUI, then guess what? They don't want you driving for them because you are a liability. You cause their insurance to go up, both their workers' comp insurance and their auto insurance. So at the end of the day, no one wants to take on this liability for somebody that they just offer a job to because this person might not even work out. So why would I take on such a hefty liability for you? And, and, and let me be honest, not only do they not want to take on a hefty liability, these insurance records stay on the company's record longer than some people stay employed. So why why would I take on a liability for something that's going to linger with my company for the next two, three years when I have somebody that only worked for six months? And so I'm going to just be honest. I've taken some job offers based on some background screenings and normally it's because of habitual behavior. So don't do something more than once. Same thing for credit checks, which is a part of your background screening. If you have multiple hits on your credit where you just haven't paid your bills over and over again, if you don't have a good reason to say why you did this, then guess what? They're going to take that job offer if you mess with their money. Because if you can't handle your money, you can't handle the company money. I mean, can you blame them? I mean, if I had bad credit, I won't be doing nothing to deal with somebody's credit card. Many companies give credit cards. Many companies give you a large, large threshold on your credit card. Do they want to take on that liability not knowing if you're going to use that card the right way? And you're probably going to cause them more expenses, more fees. And on top of that, who wants someone who, if you haven't paid your bills, you're probably not turning in receipts to document the reasons for using their credit card. So as a result, if they see something on your credit that's more than once, maybe some utility bills not paid, maybe it's, you know, going really high on your credit card over and over. You don't have to worry about it. Just go fix it and go for the next job, right? Because you have this, these habitual things. The best way to avoid that is to just have a long period of time that you're not doing this anymore. So most companies are trying to look no further than seven to 10 years back. As long as you go multiple years of not doing this thing, then guess what? You got a better chance of keeping a job. And I will tell you, people get all worried like, like oh, well, why are they looking at my credit score? Companies and employers do not look at your credit score because most times a credit score is not ever provided. I've just never seen a credit score provided. So what they're looking at is habitual behavior. They're looking at your use. They're looking at maybe the reasons for doing this. So whenever they ask you about it, you can always give them an explanation. You know, I was going through a divorce and my wife charged those credit cards up. Well, if it's an open charge, you're probably going to get the job taken away, but you can let them know, hey, I'm rectifying to clear that up, and it's going to get removed from my background screening. So if it's going to get removed from your background screening, then that has a better chance, but I will tell you, I've had some open charges, and I wasn't taking a chance. I can't guarantee you're going to be the best employee there is that I need you to be. So there's no reason for me to take this chance of you coming onto the team. And then guess what? You tell them you're going to close the charge, you're going to get it dismissed, and then you're already working for a year and you don't get it dismissed. I don't feel comfortable taking a job from a background screening a year later. And once I run your background screening one time, I'm not excited about running it again. Now, I will run driving checks again, but not background screenings again. And it's just very, very important to avoid habitual behavior. If you did something once, don't do it again. So another reason that a job offer can be rescinded is what we call it. But another reason that they can take a job offer from you is if you applied for a finance position, but your credit is bad. So I kind of briefly already hit on that, but that's super duper important. So if I want you to be my, my accounts receivable, accounts payable person, how can I guarantee that you're going to pay the company's bills on time or know what net 20, net 30, net 60, net 90 is if you have not met your net 30, net 60, net 90? <laughs> so I want you guys to know that you can't blame these companies for this. Just make sure you keep a clean record and then you won't have no issues at all. I get so many times where I extend a job offer and people will tell me, well, Tamika, um, I'm not going to turn in my two week or my month notice until you tell me that my background screening is clear. And, I and I'm going to tell y'all without a doubt that always throw me off. That gives me tons of red flags. 
tons. I've done background screenings on some people and I get so confused because there's absolutely nothing for me to say that I'm not going to give them the job. But it throws me off that people would like pause on their career because of a background screening when you have nothing there. So don't, I don't suggest doing that. I mean, that's the quicker you can probably get out that company you don't want to be in and make more money or get whatever benefit you're looking to get from this new company. So there's no need in doing that. Um, I, I just don't understand that. But if you got some hesitancies, you should have already disclosed those and you should just be very transparent and say, I'm hesitant about this or that or that situation that happened years ago or what have you. And then it's not a surprise to the company. And sometimes, many times I've seen where people still offer jobs and allow folks to come on the team, even though they have pending charges. I'm, I've had a CEO that's overwritten a decision that I've made because she felt like, you know, he's going to make it right. And, and it worked out where he did. He, she's a CEO. She owned the company. You know what I'm saying? It's your business. You can do what you want. But if you want me to do what I think is best, which is save your dollar, then I take the job away. But it could happen. That could happen. You just can't guarantee that, you know, the CEO or a leader is going to be there. Sometimes you might apply to a super big company and that CEO, that VP, never even knew that a background screener was ran on you. So you just don't want to take chances. Make sure that you have a clean credit history so that you don't have to worry about your job or your career being halted for some bad actions that you made a super duper long time ago. So another reason that a job offer might get rescinded is if you didn't disclose charges. So let's say in almost every application has that box that says, do you have any open or pending charges, right? And let's say you are that person that decide you wanna say no or you don't check the box or you don't put the dates or the charges that went with it, then guess what? We'll take a job offer. It has nothing to do with the charge at all. It has everything to do with your integrity. So if you didn't come out and disclose this, what else would you be lying about? Maybe you're lying about your experience or what have you. So you always want to be careful about not disclosing open charges. Though it's not one that you have been convicted of, it is a charge. So you want to just disclose that so that they don't find that later because you can't get rejected off of, and let me clear the, clarify that, you cannot get rejected off of open charges, but you can get rejected for not being transparent. That's considered a lie. Don't lie. Just come out and tell the folks everything. You will never know who the person is that's checking that background screen and who just might understand your situation or been in your situation before you even came into their face. So another reason that you can be rejected after receiving a job offer is if you put things on your resume that doesn't align with the background screening. And I know that sounds a lot like everything else, so I will definitely <laughs> clarify. I have had someone that said that they had X number of years experience as a contractor, and they also said that they had a master's degree. Well, the job didn't require a master's degree. The job required a bachelor's degree and it required a certain number of years. So what they did was they put in that they had a master's degree. So their number of years of experience would be less because they actually had no years of experience in contracting doing this work. I think I think he had like two years, but the, the job required like a minimum of like five to ten years or something like that he was just amazed by the fact that the background screening told me which can't this background screening came from reference services amazing company um but the background screening told me that he had 12 hours of undergrad education and he could not produce any tax forms that said that he operated as a contractor it was crazy because he actually was friends with one of the um business partners at the organization. I want to say he was a VP, but he was friends with him. And so he was out of the country and I sent him, I tried calling him a few times, not able to get in contact with him. So I sent him an email rejecting the position and he called me back and said, Hey, Tamika, I'm so sorry for calling you back so late, but I went on a vacation to China and my phone wasn't working. Um, so I'm just now getting a message. I just got back in town so that I can start work. And I said to him, what I need you to do is send that laptop back that my IT department sent to you because we were sending this job offer. And I can see that the VP was so shocked when I showed him this background screening to say that this person didn't have the education or the experience. So you can get rejected for putting that you have more experience and education 
than what is disclosed. Now, not every company runs an education or experience background screening, you know, because with background screenings, you can run different things. Like you can decide what you want them to pull. But for that company, I did because um, like all of our employees in that position were making six figures. So if you're taking home six figures, I expect you to at least meet minimum qualifications. And that's the reason we're paying you six figures because we expect that you really have all of that experience that you're telling us that you have. And so he was super duper upset. Um, but it just made sense. Like, there's no way you can get this experience, you know, this 10 years of experience and, you know, two days. So <laughs> at the end of the day, you ain't got a job. So you can get a job taken away for that reason as well. Now, another reason that you can have a job offer rescinded or taken away from you is if by chance, you have something that pops up on your background screening and then the background screening company reaches out to you usually that's either by email or by regular mail and you don't respond to it so they call that an adverse action if they find a charge that needs some clarity or they find one that has if they really if they find any charge at all they normally will reach out to you to say hey is this charge valid or give us some clarity on this charge if you don't do that then guess what they'll automatically say this person didn't respond you have i believe five business days or maybe seven days total i know it's a week um you have this time frame to respond if you don't respond in that time frame then they'll report that to the organization and if the organization decides hey this is one of our reasons against our policy that we will automatically rescind the job offer then it'll be rescinded for that now sometimes you can get a good company that says well i'm gonna reach out to them myself and that works out but i just say the best thing to do is make sure that when you're out there doing a job search you're out there applying you're out there looking for a job you out there having background screenings ran against your name your social security number all of your demographic information then just make sure that you're easily accessible it's just easier to make sure that you're watching your mail that you're watching your email people say oh no I didn't see it I had too many emails well stop them junk emails like every time you go to the store you don't have to give them your email address tell them you don't want to or you know do an unsubscribe if you subscribe to an email that's coming on a regular basis because you want to handle business you want to make sure your career is not being halted for something as simple as checking an email so make sure that you pay attention to that stuff though the background screening company won't say hey don't give them the job for this reason the company can say that now another reason and I'll say this is the final one I feel like I've said this already before so I'm gonna just toss it out there again another reason is if you don't disclose any convictions or arrests and you, and you don't have to disclose arrest let me clear that up if you don't disclose convictions on your application or on that background screening form or any part of the questionnaire that is kind of screening you for the job make sure that you disclose whatever you are aware of like disclose it be transparent i mean it may be a bit uncomfortable but at the end of the day it's one less thing that will hold you from your first day on the new job and in addition to that just make sure that you're not lying like don't lie on the application don't omit information don't not be responsive like you're trying to get a job so just do everything that you want to be done to you if you're trying to reach out to somebody about some information now another reason that you can riley come on back and hush i'm recording so now i thank you guys so much for watching another So the first reason that you may need to take a job offer back after offering a job or why your job might just be taken away from you after they already... No, I got the mic on. Damn. I thank you guys so much for watching another HR video. Please watch another one. Ah. 
So y'all, I thank you so much for watching another Hey HR video. If you found this interesting, then definitely check out my videos here. Um, those are amazing videos about background screenings and can give you even more information if you're really in search of background screening information. Again, if you're looking for a company to use, if you're looking for a great background screening vendor, then definitely reach out to me. I can connect you and make it a personal connection with them so that you can make sure to get the best rates, the best results, the best efficiency, the best customer service that there is in background screenings. I've used quite a few of them and reference services have just done an amazing job for me. I thank you so much for watching another HR video. I can't wait to see you in the next one.